Thank you, Sligman. Uh, good afternoon for the Asian friends and good morning for the European guys. Uh, so my presentation here today will focus on the fleet market in China. Uh, here we're talking about China, we're mainly talking about the main lines. Since Taiwan and uh, uh, Hong Kong has been mentioned already by Eve. So first, maybe a short introduction to Ping An Group. So you may heard this name. It's the largest financial and insurance group globally. Uh, so on the left side on my slide, you can see Ping An Group. They do, we do a lot of financing and uh, fintech business um, based on the actually the insurance business. One is the, uh, the property and casualty, the other one is the left in insurance. So we have a lot of focus on the health, but on the other side, the property and casualty business, we do have another focus on the auto business. Um, if you want some numbers, I can give you the Fortune 500. But in 2019, uh, Ping An has actually income $175 billion, which means actually almost half a billion income per day. So it's number four in China and number one, no state owned company uh, in China. Uh, Ping An Leasing is Ping An actually uh, one of the company of Ping An Group uh, established in 2013. Uh, and we do provide business to the, the leasing business to SMEs, private enterprise, large companies and uh, governments. And now for the auto financing business, uh, we have roughly uh, 830,000. Uh, in this cars, in this kind of vehicles, we have two uh, lines of business. One is passenger cars. Uh, for the passenger cars, we have three, let's say, sub business. Uh, one is for the dealer financing. Uh, the other one is pure financial leasing. And also small part is the operational leasing. Uh, for operational leasing, we have roughly uh, 20,000. Uh, and and also for the logistic fleet uh, financing. Um, a bit more deep dive for the Chinese auto market. So on the left side, you can see uh, the car market is keep growing for the past almost 10 years until 2018, uh, basically based on the economic growing as well. Uh, but since 2018, it's a period of adjustment uh, due to the economic adjustment and also due to the change of technology, mainly for the EV. And for talking about EV, different from Europe, uh, there we more have the PHEV, but in China, it's more battery electric vehicles. And I give you a small glance for the EV business here. So you can see since 2010, it's keep going and going very fast, have a big increase in 2017 and 2018. And now just a little bit, uh, because the whole market is still in control again. Um, and then for the brands of the passenger cars, you can see here, uh, the top eight brands is uh, Volkswagen, uh, GM, it's a joint venture with Syke, and then Geely, which is the mother company of Volvo, uh, and then Nissan, Chan, Syke, uh, Cherry, and uh, Honda. So the top eight brands will almost take 70% of the whole passenger car sales. Um, if you want to see here, the German brands, uh, let's say still leading the premium markets uh, compared with Europe, but for the mass volume markets, uh, we don't see let's say um, Fiat or uh, uh, Peugeot or Citroen anymore. Or we you know it's mainly occupied by the uh, Japanese brands and the national brands like the Geely and uh, China here, and also Cherry. Uh, maybe also deep dive into the commercial vehicle side. Um, we can see it's growing quite fast in the past. Um, and also here, the right part is meaning the LCV business. So you can see the, uh, the, the blue part is mainly for the heavy lorries and also the mid levels. Uh, but LCV is keep growing and we can expect more growth uh, in the future. Uh, pickups and the other rest of the, the commercial vehicles do quite small business in China. And uh, now we can have a deep dive into the auto financing market. Um, maybe we can start from the top right side. Uh, you can see cash is still a, 
main way of the transaction for the deal. Uh, people are still used to pay cash to purchase the vehicles, but this number is decreasing and people start to use auto financing. If we calculate the whole uh, auto financing market for the past 10 years, it's grown very rapidly. Uh, the compound growth rate is roughly 25%, which is amazing compared with the other countries. Uh, and now the main share of the uh, players in the auto financing markets, I only have the number of 2019 because the 2020 number is not ready yet. Uh, it's roughly 50% is provided by the auto financing company, the OEMs, uh, like uh, BMW financing and uh, uh, GMAC, and also Volkswagen uh, financing. Roughly 30% is provided uh, by commercial banks. And now we have the commercial bank uh, market share, which Ping An Bank, or let's say uh, another sister company of Ping An Leasing, is the biggest, roughly, roughly is taking 80% of the market. And the rest is the leasing and the small, let's say, uh, um, uh, financing companies. And here, the main three providers is Ping An Leasing, Tang Wu, and Yixin. Um, and roughly, let's say uh, it's 15% or 20% uh, of the total market. Uh, the message here is among all this auto financing, uh, as Eve said, operational leasing is still very, very small business. Even if we calculate all the direct leasing, includes the financial leasing, the direct financial leasing business is only 2%. Uh, the reason for this market situation is mainly because the interest rates for leasing is still very high. And in the past, uh, tax reasons for the VAT is not that strictly controlled, but that one has making a change in China. So. Next slide, I'm going to introduce you a bit more deep dive for the operational leasings you can choose in China. So in China, uh, the international clients can choose two types of operational leasing. One is the uh, short-term rentals, uh, which you can actually get it from uh, uh, like Hertz and Avis in Europe as well. In China, it's uh, the, the, the Hertz Alliance is so-called CAR, the C-A-R here, and also Enterprise is uh, partner with EHI, and also the show is the local provider here. Uh, it's same like um, the North American market and also Europe. Um, and the other one is the uh, direct financial leasing plus some operation services. Uh, typically provider is the leasing company. Uh, it's the Ping An, Tangu, and uh, also Guazi here. Uh, I make a different, let's say, perspective, how we can compare the two. For the, let's say, traditional rental companies, you have a limited choice of cars. Uh, usually that's two years, and they buy the cars first, and uh, limited choice for the client to choose. Uh, for the leasing company, direct leasing plus operational services, you have your own choice. You can choose any cars as you want. Uh, the RV, usually short-term com companies provide a fixed uh, which means it's a fixed rate for two years to three years. Uh, if any change, you want to extend the leasing period, there's no recalculation. It's the same fit. It's the same uh, cost. Uh, but for the direct leasing and operation services company, usually it's the same way you can do in Europe and America, uh, which is strict RV plus the leasing recalculation. For the interest is the same, since it's short-term rental company, it's not showed the interest. And for direct leasing, you have the, let's say, transparency on the interest. Uh, which is interesting one on the insurance. Uh, this year, uh, from 1st of April, I mean, that's not the 1st of April, but it's a real business change. It's all the uh, short-term rental companies, they need to change their uh, insurance operation tabs uh, in the past, it's no operational. That means the same as a private car insurance. But now, it needs to go all for the operational tabs, which is the same like taxi. And that almost doubled the cost for insurance. 
um, in China that per year, I mean, usually a uh, C-segment vehicle in China will cost you uh, 500 or 600 uh, euros. Uh, and if that's operational type, that will be 1,000 plus. Uh, and the uh, financial leasing plus some operational services, they're the same, same as private car. For the tax reason, uh, it's all 30% VAT. So you can use this one to deduct the income tax, to deduct the VAT. And uh, for the regulation departments, it's also very different. Uh, for short-term rental companies, you have three uh, lessons or certificates to pay attention. First one is the business lessons, that's for the company, is issued by the uh, National Bureau of uh, Industry and Commercial. And the other one is the certificate of the company. And then is the vehicle lease or vehicle rental certificate, which is issued by the Ministry of Transport. With all these license, or with all these certificates, uh, you can have the vehicle on road. Um, and on the, si on the other side, if you choose the financial uh, leasing uh, plus operation, let's say, services, that's quite easy because it's only financing, let's say, not only regulatory departments, it's the banking and insurance regulatory commission. Uh, however, it's the same like the regulatory for bank in, in Europe. Um, and also, so now in China, the RFS 16 for lease is effective for all companies uh, effectively from 20, from January this year. In the past, last year was only for the big companies, for the listed companies, but this year for all companies. So it's very strict tax control, uh, let's say, uh, will be used. And also, uh, the lease assets will be calculated. So it's not off the sheet anymore. Uh, but will be some assets on your balance sheets, but that's not all. Uh, this base is a calculation based on the annual, based on the monthly lease. So some information here. This gives us some hint. Let's say the strict tax control will actually will increase the market share of operational leasing because in the past um, the companies don't have to worry the tax, uh, especially the VAT, uh, so much. But in the future. Uh, will be very hard and people will start to use the operational leasing uh, to deduct some VAT here and also tax planning and all uh, optimization is on the agenda of many uh, small companies of course large company already started uh, some time ago leasing will be a main type of choice uh, in the future for the corporate cars um, and this trend will go faster in our mind uh, because the interest rate is uh, decreasing. Um, last slide is some tips for our international corporate clients. Uh, how, to, if you want to choose a leasing provider in China, uh, there's six, let's say, uh, perspectives we we'll recommend you to consider. First one is the car leasing will be more economical. Thanks for the tax reason I mentioned, and also decreasing interest rates. Uh, this trend is changing very fast. So if you talk about your national fleet manager, you might have a different amount uh, of sighting compared with uh, two years before. Second, um, the corporate vehicles needs a full range of professional services like fleet management and financial planning. Uh, this is quite important uh, because in China, every province or every city, they have their own ways of control. Uh, the car is registered in different cities. You need you do need a range of uh, let's say service provider across the country. Um, third one is the service need to be covered the entire country to avoid inconvenience. Same as the second one, but here what I mean is really uh, in a city plate the car plate. Um, if you want to use a car in Shanghai and has a Beijing plate, that's quite inconvenient. The fourth one, the private income tax becomes higher and uh, that's mm, extremely, let's say, uh, uh, becomes more and more important uh, for the large companies uh, in China, typically for the international comp corporate. Uh, and here, uh, there's no benefit in can tax yet, which means uh, the senior management team, if they have a car, they do not have to pay any benefit in, ta 
income tax. So a lot of SME already started to provide podcasts to management team. Uh, the fifth one, individual financial risk is still an issue. Uh, this one is not a individual risk for the whole market, but what I, by this one I mean is the private uh, car leasing and some small company, uh, the financial risk is still an issue. Sometimes they don't, do not pay the uh, monthly lease. So uh, small lease companies may not survive uh, in such a trend, especially this year, the COVID-19 gave a huge pressure to the economy this year. Uh, so the bigger company, lease companies can survive better with a strong support. The sixth one is the uh, personal privacy protection. It's very, very important. Uh, in the past, you may see mm, personal privacy protection is not an issue in China, but I would say since last year, the privacy protection is issued, the law is issued, I would say it's even harder than GDPR. So uh, how to provide uh, a legal and also in compliant um, privacy policy and, and for the protection of the people is quite important. Uh, last but not least, uh, here is only a short introduction to the Chinese markets. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, I have my email shown here. And also uh, you can contact my uh, colleague who is responsible for the fleet consultancy service department, William, and also put his email here. And uh, please feel free to ask, uh, to reach us as well. Uh, thank you for your attention. If any questions, please let me know.